look at borrowing in fraction subtraction problems. Here's an example. We're going to start by using improper fractions, which is my method of preference for algebra level math. So if you start with 7 and a third minus 2 and 5 eighths, the first thing I would do is change both of those to improper fractions. There we go. As soon as you change them to improper fractions, you no longer need to worry about borrowing or whether or not that's even a problem. It just eliminates it completely. For common denominators, I usually just multiply the denominators and cross multiply to get the numerators. So we've got 63 over here and 176 over here and just subtract. So the denominator stays the same. The numerator is 113. And as far as I'm concerned, you are done. But if you love mixed numbers, you're welcome to divide and change that to a mixed number. Let's look at another way to do subtraction with fractions, uh, keeping them mixed numbers all the way as a stacked problem like this. So if you need common denominators, which we do here, you can multiply this by 8 and multiply this one by 3 over 3. This is where we run into the borrowing issue Sometimes you have a smaller fraction subtracting a larger fraction. And so you can either borrow or you can dive into negatives for a minute. I'll do it both ways. So if we were going to borrow, once we have common denominators, what we do is we borrow one whole unit from that number and add it in terms of the common denominator. So we get 32 24 ths. And now you can see that subtraction is going to be pretty simple. So 32 minus 15 is 17 over 24. 6 minus 2 is 4. There's another way to do this with mixed numbers. So if we take it back a step, 8 24 minus 15 24 and express the answer as a negative. So that would be negative 7 24 and the whole number part would be 7 minus 2 is 5. We can't really leave the answer this way, so think of it as 5 take away 7 24 ths. So clearly you have 4 left, and out of 24, if you take away 7, you're going to have 17 left, and that's the same answer. Um, so now we've done the problem three different ways. The trick is to choose which way is your personal preference and stick with it. And that's going to work for you every time. As you can see, you get the same answer no matter how you do it, which is one of the things people love about math.